All right, let's begin. Assalamu alaikum. Um, so today we will talk about how do we go about naming compounds. Now in general chemistry one, we'll talk about naming of compounds that are <coughs> either inorganic compounds or molecular compounds or oxyanions. And then at the end we'll talk about acids, including what are called oxy acids. All right, so if you're talking about ionic compounds, now we should know ionic compounds are compounds that are made up of metal and a non-metal. So an example of an ionic compound would be sodium chloride. Now when we write sodium chloride, we know we write it as NaCl. Now we know that the Na part is sodium, which we know of course it's a metal, and the chloride part shown here is a non-metal. And so how do we name name ionic compounds? It was very simple. As as shown by this example of sodium chloride, what we have to do, we have to name the metal part first. So we look at the periodic table and we know what the name is. We say sodium. And that is written here as as sodium. As sodium. Right? As sodium. Okay. The second part we look at which is the anion part, which is the non-metal part, in this case chloride. So we know based on the naming that we have memorized, it is actually chlorine. And the rule here is very simple. The rule for naming the non-metal part is you take the main root of the word chlor and then you add to that IDE. And so it becomes simply chloride. Right? And so we name this as sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. Okay, so just a few more examples of naming of ionic compounds. Ionic compounds. Okay. As we said previously, it has to be a compound that is made up of metal and a non-metal. And the example I gave last time was sodium chloride. Now, let's look at another example. CaO. Again, the way we name it, we name the metal part first, which is calcium. And then we have to name the non-metal part, which in this case we know is the element oxygen. Now, I just told you the way we do it, we name first the root, and then we add IDE. So in this case, the non-metal part would be we write O X I D E and so the name becomes calcium oxide. Alright, let's take a couple more example. How do I go about naming this compound? K three N. Hmm. Well again the rule is very simple. You first name the metal part where in this case which is potassium and then you look at the non-metal part again we know this element is nitrogen and based on the rule we just talked about the, na the, the rule to name the non-metal part of an ionic compound is very simple so this is the metal part and this is the non-metal part the way we name it we write the element we take the root word and then to that root word we add the word I D E. So it's potassium nitride. Potassium nitride. And please note we do not worry about these subscripts here. 
we don't say potassium trinitride or tripotassium nitride or potassium 3 nitride no there is no monoditri that we use in ionic compounds right so no mono or di and tri etc right none of that just simply we name it as potassium nitride potassium nitride so okay so we just talked about that in naming of ionic compounds we do not use mono di tri etc and so on and so forth right okay we simply say it if it's NaCl we simply say it as sodium chloride right so if it is for example you know Mg3N2 we would name this as simply as magnesium as the first metal part magnesium and then the nitrogen here becomes nitride right again please note we do not say mono dry dry and so on and so forth now there is a small exception if the metal part of ionic compound if the metal is a transition element transition element now transition elements are elements that are found in the periodic table in the D block right so the, we call them the D block elements the D block elements right so if the metal is a transition element then we have a different set of rules so here's an example for example if I give the example of F E which is iron right F E 2 O 3 now here the rule would be very simple you name iron as it is iron and then this part is oxygen you say oxide right but we just said that if iron is a transition element if this if this guy here is a transition element and iron is a transition element in this case you have to mention what is the oxidation state of this guy so what is the oxidation state of iron now if you look here the oxidation state of iron is basically this guy here and the oxidation state of oxygen is basically 2 so iron has to be this number has to be for the iron that means iron has a 3 oxidation state so we say iron 3 oxide right? now this is again very different than this guy Fe2O2 or FeO in this case we will say it's iron again iron and of course we know that that 2 for the oxygen is balanced by the 2 for the ox uh, as iron here they both cancelled out and therefore it is iron and we write a 2 here and then we say oxide and these are very different compounds iron 3 is very different iron 2 is, is very different iron 2 has has a brown red brown color iron 3 has a blackish color so these are very different names and that's how we name any compound that is from the transition block or the D block.